Hello, good evening and welcome to Housebound's World. Tonight I want to bring up the real importance of backing up your system files. Now, if you've been watching my previous videos and you're already aware, I invested in a Synology NAS. And I really recommend that you think about ways of backing your machine up. Now, a NAS is, especially a Synology NAS, is a self-contained system with its own OS and they're not just for file backup. You can do absolutely all sorts with them, especially with the Synology and the applications. Now, NASes are an expensive outlay, depending on how big a disk size you go and what RAID array you run your system in. And it's only recently, after investing in a NAS, that I fell short of something that, to be honest, I should have thought of when I first bought the NAS. Now, even in 2018, we are still hit by power cuts. And <laughs> I actually came home one evening to find my NAS completely turned off. And when I turned it back on, I got an email notification to say that at such and such a time, the system had lost power. Now, for general electrical or tech goods, that if the power goes, we're not going to get too upset about, when you start talking about RAID arrays and storage and things like that, the power suddenly cut into the system is not very good. At best, if the system is idle, you'd have lost nothing and the system will have just shut down. Next up from that is that you may have lost data if it was writing data to the NAS. The worst case scenario that you could possibly get is that when the power loss happens, one of your disks goes out of array to the rest of the RAID and when you power it back up, your system or your device, your backup storage will not boot correctly and you would have to repair one of the RAID arrays. Going worse from that, if you've got cheap disks or disks not especially designed for NASes, the heads could have gone out a lot. There could be all sorts of horror stories. So how do you get around this? So the solution in, to this problem is to invest in a UPS. For those of you not in an IT background, I'm not talking about the parcel delivery service, I'm actually talking about an uninterrupted power supply. And I very recently nicked onto Amazon and I ordered myself one of these units here. This unit is a UPS made by APC and I suppose essentially the simplest way to think of it, this is a battery backup system. You plug this system directly into a main socket. You must not plug into surge protectors or other plug boards or power adapters because this needs to read the circuitry inside needs to read the power voltages correctly and it's got circuitry that instantaneously detects the loss of power. Inside the unit itself are some pretty big battery packs that are consistently charged up. And when you lose mains power, the, the system immediately switches to a battery backup power. Now the unit that I've bought is rated for 390 watts. So that's the maximum load I can pull from this UPS. Now when you're buying a UPS, you need to think about the components or the technology that you can actually connect to it. And you need to make sure that the UPS can take the load of the equipment you're going to put onto it. The more load you put on the UPS, the shorter the time the battery is going to last. Now UPSs come in many different flavours and varieties. Some of them fit in server racks, some like this are for the small office home office. Now I'm just going to spin the box around here just so I can show you the back of the UPS. Now, I'm not done an unboxing or anything like this because a UPS is a very, very simple device. You connect the mains power in at the bottom and then you connect your peripherals to the four plugs here. The minute the mains power drops, 
this unit will switch to battery and for provide backup. Now that's all well and good having battery backup, but if the power cut lasts longer than the battery lasts on the UPS, you need it to shut down your systems. Now APC UPSs use a software called Parachute. And Parachute is software that is linked either directly via a USB cable to your device that you want to shut down or a network port that connects the various devices over the network. As this is a small UPS unit, we've got no RJ45 connector on the back, just the USB connector. And what I have done, I've bought this solely for the purpose of connecting to my NAS. Now, I know that this UPS will work with my NAS. I looked into that before I bought it. And I've connected my UPS with a power, sorry, with a USB cable directly into the UPS and I'm going to demonstrate what actually do, what happens because the great thing about Synology linking up with APC and other UPS is you don't have to install any software it automatically detects it and manages it and I want to show you this right now and I want to show you what happens when I cut power to my NAS so I'm just going to switch over to the desktop so I click on control panel, I've gone into hardware and power, I then click on the UPS tab. I've then set up my settings to enable UPS support. I've said that if the power's off for more than 10 minutes, I want my device to enter safe mode, and then when the device is in safe mode, to shut down the system. I have also quite, you know, qualified further back that once power is restored to boot the system back up. Now if I click on device information, you can see there that it's understood that I've got an APC UPS, it's got my model there, it's connected, the battery is 100% charged, and that is my estimated battery time. So the time the battery lasts on the UPS is far greater than the time before it's gonna gracefully shut down the NAS to prepare <laughs> before it gracefully shuts down the NAS to protect the disk, the RAID array and the actual device. Now I'm just going to simulate what will actually happen if I knock the power off. So I've just got to go and knock a plug off and then I'll re-show you what it comes up and tells you. Okay, so I've just got to knock the plug off. Um, my phone's been pinging away in the background. I'm actually getting notifications to say that I've gone on to battery power. And if I bring up the device information, it says it's still connected, but if I close that off, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just going, right. I've got, I know if you can see that there, I've now got an attention to say that the disk station is actually running on battery power. And what I noticed, to actually get a live update of the information in there, you seem to have to close the hardware properties for the power and go back into it. And if I go into device information, you can now see that the UPS is on battery support. And according to this, I've got estimated battery life of 4380 seconds so that's probably about 50 odd minutes I guess and we are down to 95% there. Hi guys I've just been away for a short pause there and um, basically I've just discovered something and I found it really I'm glad I've done this video tonight so I've actually learned something what I wanted to do is when I knock the power off to the UPS, it normally beeps at you to say that it's on battery and it wasn't making any beeping noises. Now I was doing a quick Google and wondering, well, why is it not making any noises? And someone says, basically, if it's not making noise, it might be faulty and maybe it's not RMA. So I thought, no, I don't quite believe that. I wasn't quite sure. 
Now, from the NAS connecting to the UPS, we get very limited information. You don't have to install any software. But what you can do, if I've got it connected to my PC directly, and I connected the USB cable from the UPS to the PC, the software called Powershoot, I mentioned that earlier. And what I've actually done is installed it on the PC because I know you can glean a lot more information from the software. And now that I've got it installed, I understand why there was no audible alarms going off. And I might actually quickly show you that. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get this going, recording back on the desktop. And um, I'll quickly take you through this. So on the desktop here, I've got Parachute. I've installed the latest version. When I first installed the software, it did ask me what's the cost of my electricity per hour per kilowatt usage and um, I'm not even sure what it was to be honest I guessed at 17 pence and in doing that it's actually telling us here how much power consumption and how much it's costing to run the UPS per day and at 17 pence per hour for the whole day it's going to cost 10 pence to run that so by the end of the week that's going to cost us just under one pound. It also gives us the estimated battery time with the current load on it and it also tells me that it's connected to an AC power source. Now if I come down to notifications this is where I found this out and I didn't know this and there is an option and it's set to currently which is a good option disable the battery backup alarms when the PC is in hibernation or between the hours of 8 p.m. and 8 a.m. in the morning. Now, if you had this anywhere in your house that was somewhere that when you were asleep you would hear the beeping, then that would be an absolute bugbear. Now, we can disable the battery backup alarms at all times, or we could enable the alarms at all times, but to be honest, I'm quite pleased with that setting and I'm quite pleased that my there's nothing wrong with the UPS, it's doing exactly what it's meant to do. Um, while on this, I can adjust the sensitivity of when the UPS kicks in because not only will it kick into battery mode when it's lost power, but if you have a poor uh, electrical supply and you have, vol you have fluctuations in voltage, it can also trip into the battery power when the voltage drops too high or too low. It's on a medium setting, I'm going to leave it on that. If you've got more experience with UPSs and you think that should be on a different setting, please make the, let me know in the comments below. And we can also set what voltage we want it to trip into battery power to. Um, there's a bit more here, there's other options and things, but because I'm not using it on the PC, I'm not going to worry. I'm going to unplug it from the PC now and stick it back into the back of the now. So I'm quite pleased that there's no issues with it. So if you were to connect this up to your PC, this is the software that you'll be using. Unfortunately, with the design of this UPS, you can only connect one device via the USB cable. Like I say, when I bought this UPS, its primary purpose is to keep the NAS up and running and power it down gracefully if we do lose power for too long. And talking about too long, I think it's time I've wrapped this video up tonight. I wanted to try and keep this as short as possible. And if you want to use my Amazon affiliate links, I will link up the link to this UPS that I bought. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been in useful information for you if you wasn't uh, aware of what a UPS is and its function. Thank you for watching and I'll be coming back soon with more videos. And please, if you want to help support my channel, I don't do Patreon or anything like that currently. Uh, support me through my Amazon affiliate links. Thank you for watching and I'll see you pretty soon in the next video. Peace out.